I believe in the power of science since I was a child. When I was five years old, I had a little cat called Ginger and a small broken chair, which I converted into a small cave. I made it my own little world. I spent hours and hours with Ginger inside this small cave. Spending time imagining about where science may go to in the future, the space, the moon, and also I admired scientists and scholars who did something amazing for humanity. They were my heroes. Sometimes I dressed like them. Yes, I used to sneak to my mom's cupboard and put so many clothes on to try to look like them. Or sometimes I wore a card box on top of my head, thinking I was walking on the moon. I love exploring and learning. And I was lucky I had a father who could teach me anything I wanted. One day, I showed him the scientist, and I asked him a question. Are they really human beings? My father answered, yes. Why are you asking? I said, I wanted to be like them, but I cannot find anyone like them around. He replied, they exist. Hayat, with education and learning, you can do anything. You can be one of them. So I loved school. School days were the happiest days of my life. I know, weird, but true. I wanted to be like my heroes to make a difference in the world. So I asked my father after high school to send me to England to study, to become a scientist. Because my long life passion is to make the impact of science more tangible for every human being in the world. I believe science and technology could solve many challenges, sustainability, poverty, and of course, climate change. But if I look from the heart, I recognize part of the world is deprived of the benefit of science and technology. Why? It is not because of capability. We are all capable, as much as scientists, but we need to work hard to grow remarkable solutions, to open and to accept or to encourage new fantastic ideas. Take the Russian scientists, for example. They have a history of confidence. Building fighter jets from wood, for example, or the self-running engine, magnetic engine of a Portuguese scientist. It's true, they don't come from the right place, they haven't been to the right school, and they do come with risk. However, they remain truly stalling ideas of imagination, so powerful, but we need to be open more to them. They could be right. I also didn't go to a private school. Did I have the chance to learn another language, like English, for example? Or I had the chance to see a real lab? I come from a traditional family with no extra luxury. Eight children, and I left home all the way to England, completely new environment, with a huge risk, with no scientific background and with no English, just to fulfill my dream to help the world. I remember not long after I'd been in England, I went straight away to the admission office at the University of London. I took with me um, a female translator, and I asked her to tell them I want to do science. So the lady at the admissions counter asked, do you have scientific qualifications? The translator told me, and I said, no, but how can I get them? By this time, the lady started to ask, who won't? When she was realized it was me, she said, no way, you don't even speak English. She asked the translator to tell me, ask her to go back home. She's crazy. She didn't know that my nickname. I didn't give up. I didn't give up because I believe in the power of science and technology. And this inspiration, what pushed me so strongly against money out to work as hard as I needed and accept it at the best world universities like King's College London, Cambridge University, Oxford, MIT, and Harvard. I really wanted to link science and society. I really wanted to, to reach out to the hand of people. 
Science is already practical. Cars, train, airplane. But I wanted to make science more practical and real for people. So I worked with paper diagnostic. Uh, is a social innovation to manage healthcare in a developing world. As a scientist, me and my team, we had no clue how to take the idea from the lab into the market. So my boss advised me to go to Harvard Business School so I can learn the commercial side of the technology and how to write a business plan, how to understand to translate the idea from the lab into a product. You can imagine, as a scientist, it was tough to be in a class when everybody's speaking different language than me, and I have to keep looking smart. I reached out to the right community for encouragement and support, and this has happened when I was accepted as Social Innovation Fellow and Science Fellow at PopTech. What I found there is everybody speaking my language of social innovation. Thanks, God. Yet, when I left Harvard, still the full potential of social innovation was not being achieved. Science, scientists still fix in their own career, uh, getting 10 years, making publications. I remember I had so many discussions with them. I said, science was born to solve problems, and we have many challenges. Your talent, your gift could save lives could clean water in Vietnam to help children, could generate electricity in Africa so more people will have extra hours to study, to learn, to operate in a hospital. I remember asking them to think more out of the box. We have to take the step into the world of people. More heart and mind, thinking together, working together. I remember even I went to see um, uh, the director, the president of National Academy of Science. I suggested to him we should celebrate social innovators because they are taking extra steps to make things happen. I know this type of change is not going to happen overnight. So I took practical steps and I became social innovator. I started I2 Institute for Imagination and Ingenuity for the youth in the Middle East. I've been imagining the details of the Institute for the past 10 years, connecting with people, getting ideas, being truly inspired and energized by everyone involved, with big, clear goal in mind to create the ecosystem for entrepreneurship and social innovation for scientists, engineers, and technologists in the Middle East, so they can have the chance and the potential to fulfill their dreams for themselves and for the society and create new jobs, develop a new market, and make a difference. In I2, we take them through eight months program to teach them about business skills, entrepreneurship skills, to build their confidence and courage, and make them to understand how to translate their dream into reality. And this year, we're so lucky we graduate six innovators, six remarkable change agents. One of them, actually, he's the winner of, uh, one of the winners of Rolex Enterprise. He developed a mechanism to detect superbugs. The other uh, is from Oman, and he developed engineer a system to, uh, to, uh, to help uh, credit the less fortunate. He's also amazing. I believe we, the scientific com community, need to integrate with the changing world. Not only the white lab code part, because for us to be affected, we don't have to be a change agent. Rather, we can decide to be mentors, to be advisors, because our huge collective knowledge can to make a huge positive change. And I, too, we have a network of mentors who advise, and they're international, and support and inspire the entrepreneurs who are really in their lonely and exciting journey. To embark on your journey and inspiration is essential. Science opened my eyes to many things, but I truly believe we need to take extra steps to make science more open and more out of the box quickly. 
I believe some of the suggestions are of the seed to celebrate the remarkable power of science, to cultivate scientists open to infinite solutions and possibilities and engage them with the society and link to the policymakers. I remember when I was appointed by the King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia to be in the Shura Council, the parliament uh, uh, cabinet, many people were rejected for me to be there. I understand it's not an ideal environment for a scientist, but I wanted to be there because I will have a voice, I can change, I can advise the future of science for the new generation, for women, for girls. And it's worth it because it's not easy to find a scientist who can understand to translate the importance of science to the decision makers where the real changes begin. Finally, talking about Institute of for Imagination and Ingenuity, I would like to define imagination in this way. As the confidence to dream what people will say no to, but you have the confidence to achieve it. And if people say no, it doesn't mean you're wrong. It may mean there is something missing in their life that they haven't recognized. On the other hand, if they say yes, they want you to develop something they already know it exists. So they may be not the opportunity you hoped for. So keep going against people's rejection, because by doing that, you may reveal the missing part, which is not going to change not only their life forever, but the world for a better one. Thank you very much. Thank you.